So after calling the Texans Packers game yesterday, Tony Romo went on to CBS and shared some thoughts about the game and all specifically goes into some things about the Packers that I found interesting. So here it is from CBS Sports. We head out to the site where Tony Romo joins us in the wake of what was a thrilling one, Tony. Let's start up front with what Green Bay was able to do. What did you see, the nuance from that scheme of the front seven that allowed them to just live in that kitchen of C.J. Stroud all day? I think it was a well-designed defensive look. They changed up the looks, but they knew what they were doing. I think this Green Bay defense is showing signs of becoming a really dominant unit, and I know they were a little banged up earlier in the year, especially when Alexander was out, but you see what they are capable of, and they ran so many different fronts and different schematic things that made it really difficult on C.J. Stroud. I know he looks like a veteran, he's mature, but there's some stuff he hadn't seen you know, in the National Football League today. And hats off to this Green Bay staff. They they definitely had a great plan, and the players executed at a high level. They sir- That's one thing that is, is fun to watch. The more that Halfley gets time with this defense and they start to really figure the scheme out and, and get better at, you know, doing what Jeff Halfley is asking them to do, it's cool to see just the, the different blitzers he'll bring, the way that he'll drop certain guys into coverage to throw off the quarterback, to throw off C.J. Stroud, the way he, you know, brought Xavier McKinney, on some blitzes, Eric Wilson from the linebacker spot with Quay Walker out earlier in the game. Um, this this is a defense that I think is going to get better and better, and I shared with you guys a few days ago last week from Jeff Halfley's press conference where he did share that he thinks that as time goes by, he's going to be able to add more and more to this defense as the players start to really grasp the you know everything they need to do. And I think that this was an example of a game where we're seeing them, you know, operate at a much higher level than they were even earlier in the season. And it also helps when you have these players like Evan Williams starting to play at an insanely high level. Eric Wilson playing great. Edron Cooper making a lot of nice plays. And so this defense just looks to get is, is looking like it's getting better and better. Certainly did, Tony. We, we know what the marquee is going to look like when these two teams go at it. It's going to be Stroud. It's going to be Love. But... Talk to me about what these compliments of running backs have meant. These are two teams that are trying to take that next step and identified running back as a place in the offseason. They wanted to get better. How big were Mixon and Jacobs in the effort on both sides in this one? They're huge. I mean, this is to make it quarterback friendly. You just hand the ball to the running back and you have a play action game. I thought Green Bay's ability to eliminate the play action passing game that's really where houston creates a lot of their chunk plays and explosives and they just didn't have the opportunities to do it and a lot of it was green bay's fronts and looks but uh i I really felt like going forward these are two teams who have very similar structures and identities and i think right now the packers showed that they just have a little bit more juice um, as far as the weapons and we know when nico collins gets back that'll change Mm -hmm. them we always talk about, Tony, you and I winning in different ways, and this is a Green Bay team that almost exclusively won by winning that turnover battle all season long. They get dominated in that department in this game and still walk away with the win. What can that do for a team's confidence? Oh, a lot. And like you just said, you don't lose 3-0 to zero in the turnover and uh, giveaways and takeaways department and win the game. And that just shows you how good you are and how good you can be. And I think they're going to be in the mix all the way to the end of the year. I think Green Bay is a real formidable Super Bowl contender. And um, I feel like Houston still has to get some stuff up front to go against the best teams in the NFL. But they have the ability to do it. And like I said, when Nico's back, that'll help him a lot and get the defense to calm down a little bit with some of the pressures. That is. T- all right, so there you ha- hear it. Tony Romo calls the Packers a real, formidable Super Bowl contender. And I would have to agree, especially after watching these past two weeks, the way the defense has played, the way the defense has progressed. And looking back to last season and Jordan Love's first season starting with the Packers, the fact that they beat the Cowboys the first week there, then they go and lose barely to San Francisco. And you compare these two teams, the team that was in there in San Francisco lost the game near the end, and then this team right now, there are a few differences. First off, it's right now we got a veteran kicker instead of Anders Carlson who missed a key field goal in that 49ers game, which I think did shift that game. The Packers could have won that one if he would have made that field goal. It would have been a completely different scenario there. He's on the 49ers now. Don't know if you guys saw. He made a 55-yarder with them to start, and then he missed an extra point, which is sort of 
the similar struggles he had in Green Bay where we knew that he had a leg that could he could make like a 60 yarder just from his power but he was so inconsistent when it came to extra points when it came to easy you know 30 yard field goals 40 yard field goals and just in that one area it looks like the Packers have a much better kicker now who has a experience of being very very good when it comes to your normal kicks 30 yarders 40 yarders over 50 he's a little bit shaky but he has the leg to do it. And so that's definitely one area where the Packers are better than they were last season um, at that point. And then the defense, I think, is really shaping up to be a much better unit than last year. And last year, the Packers defense did finish about 10th when it came to scoring defense. So it's not like they were a, a bad defense necessarily, but they had some real bad moments against poor competition, like Bryce Young having a career day against Joe Barry's defense. But I think this defense, when it comes to playoff time, which I fully expect this Packers team to make the playoffs. We're going to be facing off against, you know, top tier offenses. And I think that the Texans are probably going to be a playoff team in the AFC. And so to see the, the Packers defense handle CJ Stroud like they did, that gives me some confidence against some of these, you know, better teams that this secondary looks like they are really shaping up to be one of the better units in the league. And I think to, to see them hold CJ Stroud to only 86 yards, I mean, that's, that's impressive. And I think it's partly because of the unit they have out there now with Evan Williams at safety, played all the starting snaps next to Xavier McKinney this past game. He's playing at an elite level, I would say, next to Xavier McKinney. And then with Keyshawn Nixon outside, Jair, and then uh, Javon Bullard, you know, playing in the slot a lot. This this Packers team, this Packers defense is really shaping up to be, I think, a, a much, much better unit than last year. And you throw in those, those takeaways this season. Um, that's, that's one area where they've, you know, gotten better, I would say. And... Thinking back to last time, last year at this time, the Packers were what, like two and five or so, and now they're at five and two. I mean, we can see just the progress they've made from early last year, and the team they were later down the stretch last season was obviously much better than they were earlier in the year. And I just think that the more experience this team gets, the more close games they have, the more times that Jordan Love has to come from behind to have a game winning drive, the better he's going to become playoff time because in that 49ers game, he made a bad decision through a bad interception, and it's not that he won't ever throw any of those, but I think that the more situations he gets, like in this Texans game where he had to move the ball down the field, get into field goal range, it's like in, in the moment you would rather just you know win by a, a couple touchdowns, but when it comes to playoff time, there's going to be some close games where you probably need a drive from Jordan Love to secure a victory, to get into field goal range, and I think it's good to get this experience where once you do it enough, you know that in those big time playoff moments, you you have that confidence that in that trust in yourself and your offense that you can actually get it done come playoff time. So um, all signs I think are pointing in the right direction. I, and I agree with Tony Romo that this is a a real Super Bowl contender. I, I think that this is a team that can beat any team in the NFL. We even saw it to end last season, beating the Chiefs, beating the Lions, beating the Cowboys, almost beating the Niners. They they had a lot of that ability last year to end the season. And I think they still have it. And I think they're even better than they were the, uh, to end last season. But if you guys want more Packers content, feel free to subscribe down below. And I'll see you guys next time.